Hi, I'm Matt Burton with Rolling Wrench. If you found this video, you probably found it on YouTube. As you know, most of our videos on YouTube are completely free. This video is actually a paid video. This is going to be all about the top end rebuild and big bore install on the Yamaha C3, the Yamaha 50F, and the Yamaha Vino 4T. That's the uh, three valve fuel injected model. So enjoy the preview of this uh, rebuild slash big bore install. And if you, uh, you want to purchase the whole thing, then just click the link below. Appreciate you watching. First thing we need to do is remove this motor. There's no way to do this uh, big bore kit without removing the motor. Most scooters you can do big bore kits without removing the engine, but the Yamaha Vino, Zuma, and C3, that is not the case. So let's start by doing that. All right, step one is to remove the brake line, brake cable here. So I'm just loosening this. Notice how I pushed it in first, then I loosen it. it makes it really easy. Just pull that out. There's a 10 millimeter here. I just like to screw that screw back in. And then you could slide the cable out. Get a little pull. Just like that. Notice I pulled the boot back. And then you can put this guy on there. Like this. And just pull that out of the way. Just like that. So the very first thing we need to do before we do anything is remove the battery. So this is the floorboard. We're just going to remove this uh, the mat. Next, we'll loosen this screw. All right, and this is a Torx bit. This is a T25, but I really don't think that this is the factory screw that went to this. If, it may be. I'm not sure. I'm just going to loosen that. Then I can pop that up like that. And all I really need to do is uh, loosen the negative, the ground cable, um, because it... If you loosen one, you can do the ground or the positive terminal, and uh, basically the battery's not gonna get any juice with one side disconnected. So this is just a trickle charger on here. This is aftermarket, yours probably won't have that. It's always a good idea to have. So now that I have that disconnected, we can proceed. There's no juice going to the anything on the whole scooter. All right, next you'll open up your seat. It's like this, there's gonna be uh, two bolts here. Actually, it's going to be this guy. All of these, but there's, see there's a latch under here. You just have to let hang. It's down in here. Uh, so when you go put it back, it might be a little difficult. And then down in here, there's two more 10 millimeters. And then from there, you can lift this guy out of here. I always like to just screw these back in. So you don't lose them. Next thing is we're gonna remove these uh, cables, the throttle cables off of the throttle body. I just loosen it, this, these guys here. So I just get it loose and then unscrew it by hand. The goal is to keep everything intact so when we pull the motor out, everything's intact, but you'll have to get removed, you know, cables and wires. So once, once you get that loose, you can kind of fish this guy around and pull the cables off. Once you get it loose, it's pretty self-explanatory. And then we'll just push these guys out of the way. And then I always like to uh, screw the uh, old screws back into the original holes. We don't have, you'll know exactly where they go. You don't have uh, screws and nuts everywhere. You don't know what they go to. So there's that. Okay, next is to remove the wires. You've got all these wires here that are um, um, for the stator and all kinds of other stuff. 
just gonna pull this boot back. All right, and then just uh, start popping these um, cable or these uh, electrical terminals loose one by one. Don't never pull by the wire. Just pull only by the plastic. There's those, there's those three, and then you have the throttle body, throttle body sensor, throttle position sensor. And then there's one right underneath. It's kind of difficult to get to. I can just feel it, basically. All right, so there's all the wires um, disconnected. One more wire, you're gonna go to the, what, uh, the starter here. And the ground, those two wires. So we'll get that now. All right, so to get to that ground uh, wire, or to remove it, see I've loosened this 10 millimeter bolt on the mud flap and pulled that back just like that. I'll show you what I mean. Pulled that back just like that. And see I was able to fish a um, five millimeter, uh, five millimeter Allen socket in there with a wobble head back to this T-handle. So then I could loosen the T-handle just like that and I'm loosening the bolt. Kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, that's how I did it. Next is the ignition coil here. Unplug these wires. Kind of a pain in the butt to get off. Sometimes you gotta use a screwdriver to pry it slightly. Just grab the, never grab the wire, just the plug. There we go, both of them are unplugged. Now, on the side of the engine, the right side of the engine, back in there, you see that plug there? That's the coolant temperature plug. There's that, I'm gonna unplug that, and there is this little clamp here, right right back here where my finger's pointing. And that is like, more like a zip tie, so we're gonna undo those two guys. So here is that zip tie I was referring to, there. You don't wanna cut it. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a one-time use deal. You can see it, see there it is right there. Just keep, just undo it and then you can reuse it. There's a little tang on the back that you can open to get that wire out. All right, for this, uh, the sensor, you're just gonna push this. This is the uh, uh, coolant temperature sensor. So I'm just gonna push this button down and then I could pop that, uh, that off of there. Kind of do it from the top, from the, up here. All right, now on the top of the engine, you'll see the uh, fuel line going in. That's a 10 millimeter nut. And then right off the side, there's a clamp that holds this hose in place. That is a eight millimeter. And then finally, right here is another clamp. That's a 10 millimeter. So we're gonna loosen all of those. Remove that. Get that out of the way, screws the screw back in. Here is the actual mount to the uh, fuel inlet. It's removing this Allen, which is a uh, five millimeter there. Like that. Now we're able to lift this up, and pull that out just like that. And then you're gonna remove this little clamp out of here, which I'll do. Loosen this one. That's another uh, five millimeter. And you could screw that back in. This is the intake manifold, it's pretty much loose right now. Let's 
screw that halfway back in. Okay, that's all out of the way. Now we have that eight millimeter that I'll need to get loose. See if I can get in there. Got her. Now this whole fuel line is loose. One thing that would have made it easier is if we kept these intake manifold loose like this. And now we've got our fuel line out of the way. Perfect. I'm just gonna screw all of these back in though. Lightly. All right, at the rear wheel here, you'll have the uh, shock bolt. It's a 12 millimeter. Pull that guy out, the scooter will drop down. You can pull the shock back like that and reinstall that screw. So essentially now, the only thing that's holding it is one bolt. All right, on the right side of the uh, scooter, you'll see the uh, um, radiator cover. I'm gonna need to move, remove that. I'll do. These are just Phillips head screws. watching the uh, first half of this video. If you want to watch the rest of the video, just click the link down below. It'll send you over to our website where you can purchase the video for a small fee in comparison to what we charge if you were to come to my business rolling wrench. Uh, again, I appreciate it and we'll see you in the next chat.